Welcome to the Ars Electronica Future Labs 25th anniversary program, the episode 8, the final episode of our program. My name is Horst Hörtner and I'm founding member of the Ars Electronica Future Lab 1996 and directing it since then. What a journey, um, 25 years. A huge stack of projects, few million lines of code, hours of animations and real-time graphics. We've done sculptures, publications, media art, architectural media art interventions, um, the spexels, the drones in the sky, music visualizations from Wagner to Stravinsky to contemporary music. We have several robotic installations behind us and national and international research grants as well. The Ars Electronica Future Labs holding several patents in several fields and working with a row of industry partners. And still, our home base is the art. Art, technology and society is the playground that we're working in. Take the Deep Space 8K, for example, where we're standing right here. It's not only accessible to the visitors of the Ars Electronica Center. Artists, engineers, scientists are working with us in that environment to generate new perspectives. It's even been used for higher education in medicine, for example, or Deep Virtual. The production environment that we are standing in right now, Deep Virtual is a virtual production environment developed by the Ars Electronica Future Lab and used for all the productions of the episodes that you've seen so far. The Ars Electronica Future Lab is not only a place for prototype and experiments. It's the laboratory is an experiment on its own, constantly adapting to the new topics, the new perspectives that the team is, holds relevant for the future. The alchemists of the future, the first 25 years and beyond, is actually um, an insight into the Future Lab's perspectives. It's philosophical and mental DNA, what moves the team, and how do ideas and topics emerge in the team. It's not a collection of projects on a timeline. It's more focusing on the context of the in-between. With the author Andreas Hirsch, we have worked throughout the last year to put the focus on the lab's wicker work of people and ideas. We've included interviews with partners and colleagues from art, science and industry, and former members of the Future Lab, members of the Future Lab, and without your contributions, this all would not have been coming together. Thank you very much to all of you for your contribution. You can get your hard copy in your preferred bookstore, or you simply download it from our website as a PDF. It's really a great help to understand what the Future Lab is made of, people and ideas. Some facts we've estimated about the last 25 years in the background, while I'd like to address a very important achievement of the team. The Future Lab is the ongoing proof for the fact that a handful of people, their passion for creativity and will to innovate, are able to turn groundbreaking ideas and ideals into tangible reality. The loose-knit crew of obsessed individuals could turn into an institution that has made a name for itself on the global landscape. Who are those people? Who did that all? It's a group of about 430 people in total over the last 25 years. Today we want to put the spotlight on those who were accompanying us through the last 25 years. As we have seen in the past episodes, there were a lot of outstanding contents, projects, achievements that the Future Lab had the opportunity to work with or work on. But all of those achievements would not have been possible without the people behind these ideas. The team of the entire Ars Electronica to start with. The Ars Electronica Future Lab team 
a tremendous huge group of talents and inspirators we had the pleasure to work with. Today, we want to thank you all. Thank you to all our partners and collaborators who were and still are inspiring and inspired enough to go on the journey with us and still are ready to jump with us into the next adventure. Naming the list of all the contributors who worked with us is purely impossible. I mentioned already there's 430 people contributing to the RS Electronica Future Lab. A big thank you to you all former members who shared that path with us for some years. Every single person has left her or his traces on the mindset of the entire team. There's one person I want to mention in particular, a very dear friend who at the very beginning was as convinced that I was about the necessity of an atelier laboratory for the Ars Electronica. Not only was he convinced, luckily, also he was very convincing as well. He helped the Future Lab a lot to become what it is today. Thank you, Gerfried Stocker. I'm sure Gerfried will hate that part, but I simply had to do it. And once every 25 years, Gerfried, you'll survive that. Ideas of the presence for the future, that is what the Future Lab is focusing on since 25 years. Since a few years, we form a group of people of very elaborated talents in the laboratory. These are our key researchers, a group of experts in art and research who act as multi-talents in the fields of art, technology and society, as well as in project management, of course. Over the years, we have increased the responsibility and visibility of our key researchers. Each of them is representing his or her specific research topic, representing a research question which isn't focusing on a specific detail within a specific discipline. We are not faculty-based. Our base is transdisciplinarity. The key researchers' topic are work areas perceivable only through a very wide-angle lens. Each research question is constructed in a way that all disciplines could contribute to the individual research activity. This once more addresses the transdisciplinary approach which the Future Lab has its in DNA. Very early we have split up the direction among three people at the Ars Electronica Future Lab and since quite a while this is Roland Haring and Hideaki Ogawa. Focusing the future, Roland, how would you describe this agenda and what is the most relevant aspect from your perspective? I think a very relevant aspect of Future Lab is that it's a place where we can experiment with ideas and visions about our future society. Technological progress has a profound impact on our society. Some of its achievements we are proud of, but others are very difficult to understand and often have hard to grasp consequences. To better understand the impact of technologies, we need to experiment with them with an open mind. And that's exactly what we can do at the Future Lab, together with our partners. Take Deep Space here as an example. We are constantly working to develop it further. What you see here is a new experimental feature. We added speech recognition to this immersive environment. Using the capabilities of modern AI systems, it's now possible to make this space even more immersive by letting it understand what people are speaking in it. We will find out what this means for future content development in upcoming experiments, but it's definitely in line with the general trend that is increasingly connecting our physical world to the data that surrounds it. And that raises a lot of interesting questions. Thank you, Roland. And Hidesan, from your perspective, what are the most important things about the Future Lab and how would you describe them? Thank you, Horst and Roland. It inspires me a lot. From my side, 
I would like to explain the uniqueness at the Future Lab as based on three factors. First, we are a do tank. As Roland described the innovation here, the doing is essence in our laboratory. We are not think tank, but a do tank. By practicing, by executing our crystallization of the tangible future, we are getting the tangible feedback from people. So in this way, we are continuing to practice the doing. But for doing so, we need a motivation, we need a driving force to doing. The second point is we are an art-driven laboratory. Art is very important now especially in this uncertain society, we are losing our kind of compass. Art can create questions rather than solutions. In this way, art is our common language within our laboratory. We are not scientific laboratory, but we are artist collective to shift the questions for society. The third point, by having this mindset for execute, executing something for the future, I would say we are a creative jazz band. In 21st century, it's the creating the future and also creating vision is not anymore based on top-down approach. Rather, as I describe, you know, this collaboration, respecting and having flexibility is a foundation to make something together. So meaning, you know, collaboration is not creating the crossover area, but uh, we are creating the creative collisions to detect new findings from the chemi chemical, you know, reactions. So we are the creative judgment. Thank you, Hideson. I see that art and, and art thinking um, becomes more and more important for our society as well. And I think that the perspectives of the Ars Electronica Future Lab, or in general of an atelier laboratory, are needed more than ever. The Future Lab is a mixture of talents, discussion fields like kaleidoscopes, of perspectives and visions. I want to mention a project by a former member of the lab, Mahir Yavuz, called Kaleidoscope, where he invited future lab members to share their views and perspectives. He is visualizing the outcomes of those visions and perspectives on a website, and you can reach that project, Kaleidoscope, from our anniversary webpage as well. As mentioned several times already, the transdisciplinary approach of the alchemists of the future is key to our work style. Placing questions ideally outside of any disciplines is where the soil of innovation can be found. I want to introduce you to the team of today, the current alchemists of the future. And here they are. This is the team of the 25th year of the Aris Electronica Future Lab. And we want to celebrate the team, the actual alchemists of the future, the former members, the former teams, and the teams to come in the future. Happy birthday, Future Lab!